welcome back to the COP Council. I hope you're all on a fantastic day. If you are, then please let me know in the comment section down below. We are, well, we are doing a match preview show right now. And as you can see, I am joined by a very special guest. And that is Mickey. Also, you guys know Mickey. And, you know, absolute pleasure to have him on. How are you doing, uh, my mate? Oh, I'm fantastic, mate. I'm loving every minute of this season. You know, we've got two good games to look forward for. We've got the record game looking forward for tomorrow breaking the record if we can win and then we've got the cup game against Chelsea which I'm really intrigued to see what kind of team we put out mm. it's get it's going to be a very interesting type of game isn't it and obviously we have probably got one thought of Chelsea in the FA Cup but obviously it is the less uh, not the less the preview sorry it's a Watford preview and if you guys uh, are new to the channel then please hit the subscribe button it would be massively appreciated also like share and everything like that if you could as well um, hit Mickey up his links is in the video description down below or hit him up on Twitter it should be on the screen uh, right now if I edit that in correctly so if I haven't then I do apologise but it should be right there uh, at, Mick, uh, at mfriars50 on Twitter, so go and check him out on Twitter because, you know, top red, and I love talking to Mickey, he's absolutely brilliant, but moving on then, a bit off the preview uh, show then, and I know someone that, uh, Mickey, you're very fond of is Harvey Elliott now, yesterday, I recorded um, you know, the video yesterday about Mo Salah and you know, the profits and everything like that, and about an hour later, Harvey Elliott got confirmed with a new contract, now it's just horrible for uh, content creators because it's like you make a video and then boom, not more news on top, top of it. But what was your initial reaction to uh, Harvey Elliott getting a brand new contract at Liverpool? Over the moon, mate. Over the moon. You know, God tied his kid down. He's a future world superstar. I've, you know, you know when you see players come through at 16, players like Rooney, you just know from looking at them and how they play at that age that they're going to be great players. Yeah. And, you know, I, if he fulfills his potential, he will be one of the best players in, in the Premier League, without a shadow of doubt, but possibly in the world. And I, as I said yesterday in a few podcasts, as I was with you with, I'm 100% certain he a challenge for the Ballon d'Or in the future at some point. Yeah, I, I agree with that. If you guys don't know what we're talking about in podcast terms, obviously, uh, myself, Mickey, uh, Jack, Mac, obviously, that's where we go over and do uh, the D Doug as well, and Dave from Dave's LSE Chats, and Doug from the Dugout. Um, obviously, we do a podcast that is in the video description down below. Go and check it out, guys. We have an absolute laugh uh, doing it. It's weekly as well, so go and check it out. Obviously, it will be in the video description down below. But in terms of Harvey Elliott, I absolutely agree with you. I think he's one for the future we've talked in depth you know everywhere um you know harvey elliott and curtis jones and nico williams they are the future for liverpool and you know to get them tied down and you know that it can only be a good thing for liverpool obviously with everything that's going so well at the minute obviously us being 22 points clear and you know the profits and everything like that getting young talent down is absolutely brilliant and i do agree with you as well i think he could be ballon d'Or. Uh, contend in, in the near future could he potentially be the replacement from Hamid Salah, who knows the future will tell with that but in t terms of just getting him done now is absolutely fantastic the other piece of news then today um, is Timo Werner yes we've talked about Timo Werner for a very very long time it seems to be like I'm talking about him every single video but James P.S. today did come out with some Timo Werner news and that was discussions are yet to be open but I expect LFC to make an approach in the next couple of weeks now Mickey with that news then um it's a pretty good sign for Liverpool that the you know bad news Pierce as he's been named you know a few times uh, over the years. Uh, it's quite a good thing that he hasn't denied like that Liverpool are going for Timo Werner. I just think he's the worst kept secret in football. I think it's been on for a year. I think he promised uh, Leipzig another year. Liverpool were interested in him at the same time they were interested in Kiata. I think they wanted both at that time as well. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it was a little bit too early for him, but he's flying in the German league. He's second high scorer behind Lewandowski. You know, you might say, oh, he's second here, but Lewandowski, we know, is a world-class player, possibly yeah. the best person, best player, well, striker in the Bundesliga. Uh, so, Werner, that's, Werner is up there. Werner sort of plays from the left. So, yeah. 
he can play through the middle and through the left. So he's a definite Klopp type of player with a bit of versatility. He wouldn't be surprised if Klopp puts him on the right sometimes just to teach him. Because that's, that's what he does with players. He seems to put them where they're not good at to make them better. So, you know, it's it's going to happen. I think it's been on for a while. I'm, I don't want it to be another Fakir thing because we thought that was going to happen and it didn't. But I don't think it's that bad now. I, I think it, it's just a matter of time. We're into a new era in transfers where transfers are being agreed outside the transfer window with yeah. Zayek, with Chelsea. And I'm finding this quite strange because yeah. I thought, you know what I mean? So, yeah. it's, it's good news. Liverpool will probably try to keep this on the hush because you know, they like to do things in secret. But I think this is too big for them to, to hold back. The fact that no one's really denying it it's like Klopp got asked the question today and he just, he didn't deny it. He just spoke it. He didn't yeah. say he was coming or anything, but he didn't deny it. Um, the usual spiel, he's not our player and all, you know what I mean? It, listen, he will be a great addition. I think he's the perfect player for us. He'll put in some competition up front, which is what I think is what's needed. I think the, the three of them have had it a bit easy. Yeah. Right. I know Origi comes on, but Origi is not a threat to them front three. Is he? He's always going to be second fiddle to them. Werner will be a different kettle of fish. If, once Werner gets in the team, it'll be hard to get put out. So it yeah. might be a bit more rotation for the front three. And we've all agreed throughout the whole season that some of the games, they have looked a bit lethargic because they're tired. So yeah. it, it, it's it's... Let's just hope Liverpool do what Chelsea do and announce it, get it over and done with, say he's coming at this day, this is the day he's going to take over, sign his contract, and whatever. just get it out of the way. It might as well now, because it's all it's been leaked. Yeah, it probably is one of the worst-kept secrets in football at the minute. And I think that's just the theme of Liverpool at the minute. It's the worst-kept secret that we're going to win the league. It's the worst-kept <laughs> secret that we might sign Timo Werner. It's one of these things. And, you know, I, I also agree with you. I think football now has changed where, you know, Teams are agreeing to sign players now in, you know, February, March, April time. And, you know, like um, ZH going to Chelsea, I thought that was a piece of brilliant business for Chelsea anyway. Because, uh, like, I know me and you, we've both rated uh, ZH um, for a very long time. And, you know, in terms of Timo Werner, you can just tell he wants Liverpool. And it's not like if he's just say like, I feel like with most players, they might say that like Jurgen Klopp is a fantastic manager to go and play at Barcelona. I think like you know Liverpool have been used like that in before, not so much in Klopp's reign, but in terms of like other people like Suarez and everything. All right, they're at Liverpool and they were like using Liverpool to go up to Barcelona and things like that. But in terms of Timo Werner, I know we've talked massively about him, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks. I think it will get done. I have said on Twitter, if you're not following us on Twitter, then it's in the video description, but um, I've said on Twitter that, you know, I, I think it's done, me personally. Kind of maybe jinxed that because of Fakia and everything like that. And we talked off camera as well about the Fakia, uh, you know, situation with that. And for me, you know, if Timo Werner wasn't to become a Liverpool player, I'd generally be gutted. Okay, so now we'll start on then with uh, the preview for the Watford game. Now, obviously, we are only four uh, wins away then from the Premier League trophy. Obviously, we've said it's the worst kept secret in football at the minute. You know, Liverpool winning the Premier League trophy, but we still only need four more wins. And, you know, it could be less than that, depending on uh, Manchester City's results. Uh, but, Mickey, you know, Going on then to Watford, um, you know, it's a bit weird how they're in a relegation battle. Obviously, they've done so well, um, you know, sacking managers. And I think Nigel Pearson is their third manager this season. You know, can you really like think of like how they're in this situation, even though it's worked so well for them over the last couple of seasons? I've never a fan of sacking managers after a while. Uh to me, you've got to give managers at least a couple of years. You will have ups and downs. You've got to stick by them. And I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the old Man United thing. Is Ferguson was struggling at Man United in his first four years. They kept faith and look what happened. To be fair, there was signs Liverpool were getting better under Klopp, but it wasn't great. 
it wasn't where we wanted to be, but look at us now. It, it, this is a true story of getting to where you get and you can build a team that can last for a while. Now, Chelsea have had a bit of success sacking managers every two years. That's dried up now. Yeah, it was a it, it was a fluke. Um, sacking managers and winning trophies, sacking managers winning trophies. No one ever built a team there that will last for years. They they built a team that lasted two years. It doesn't make any sense to me to sack managers after that time. Three managers in one season. It, it's no wonder they are where they are because it, the players are. You know, the three different systems yeah. they've played this season. Must be confusing for him. I just think they probably overachieved last couple of years, getting to the cup final. Because um, once they got to the cup final, their form has been atrocious. Yeah. I just think defensively they're weak. They've got some great players going forward. They've got dangerous players that can score. But under the new manager, Pearson, they do fight more. Where as before they were a bit lacklustre in the old fighting, you know, the old fighting department. I think Liverpool will beat them, but I think they'll score against Liverpool. Mm, yeah, I think uh, I agree with you in the sense that you know it is confusing for them. You know, three managers in a season is well is bad enough anyway. But once you're constantly sacking managers, you know, season in season out, there's no rhythm there, and you, no, there's no growth really. You know, look at Jurgen Klopp is tucking in four four seasons then practically to be crowned Premier League champions then or close to it anyway. Um, obviously, you spoke there that um, Watford have some very good players. Um, in this game then, who do you think is our biggest threat then to our goal anyway? So, to me, Decore, I really like him. I think he's a he's a, he's a defensive midfielder with a with an attacking threat. I know he doesn't make... He's a bit like Fabinho, very similar... Very really similar players. Fabinho is probably in the next category up. He's the next down. So I think he's by far their best player. Uh, they've got a couple of players on the wing that could cause some damage. I'm not sure whether that Saar is available. Yeah. Is he injured? I think Saar's available as far as I he's, look. So under Pearson, he looks like a really good player, dangerous so if he's recovered, because last time I know about him, he had that hamstring injury. I don't, I don't know how long he's out for, but if he's back, he's he's a danger man. But the boys have looked a bit tired at the back because they played a lot of games. Um, so they are dangerous going forward. I, you know they were unlucky at Anfield. Let's be honest, they were unlucky. They really, really poor finishing. Got, you know they could have easily got a point at Anfield. Yeah. We, we can't remember that. Um, but definitely for me, Decore is the is the man. He's in my uh, fancy fancy team as well, so that's yeah. how highly I rate him. <laughs> yeah, I think he's. I, to be honest, with you, I think if Watford do get relegated, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Liverpool did go and get him. You know, for a reasonable fee. I think the, you know, he, he, like like you said, he is like Fabinho. You know, he's very attacking minded, but can also do a job defensively. Um, for me, I think obviously the big threats are Tridini. I think you know he always likes you know trying to play against Virgil Van Dijk, but Virgil, you know, it's it's nearly impossible to get past Virgil Van Dijk, but um, or practically impossible to some people. But still, um, I think um, even though he's a, f- a former Evertonian, I think Delafeo is a you know a very very talented player, like you said, Saar as well. He, you know, he could even be on Liverpool's list for next season. You know, he is a very talented player. But, you know, for me, I think this game is realistically, I think lately anyway, I think Liverpool have been their own problem. I think, you know, even though even though like teams like West Ham and others have like give us a fight. And to be fair, they needed to because, you know, Liverpool can just steamroll teams four or five nil. But I think Liverpool have been their own worst enemy lately. Uh, but moving on then to Liverpool, we'll move away from Watford and especially team news then. And in terms of injury news, you know, Jordan Henderson is still out. Um, Shakiri is still out. Um, Kleine is still out. Uh, one name in particular that you know was a bit 50 50 is James Milner, but he is going to be out for the game. Um, do you think, Mickey, that you know any of them would get into the team? Maybe not so much Jordan Henderson because we know he's out, but you know, do you think if James Milner was available, do you think he would get into the team for Saturday? It is a possibility. I, I love James Milner. 
I think whatever position you put him in in the team, he'd do a good job. He could put him up front and he'd probably score a goal. Do you yeah. know what I mean? He, he, so he's an important part of the team. But to me, Milner, Milner would have played or played from the bench anyway, I think. I, I, I've been saying the last couple of weeks, I'm waiting to see Lalana take a major role in this net running now. I think yeah. with Henderson out, Lalana to me is the natural... Yeah. the natural person to come in and fill in for him. I think that that's why they've been teaching him in the pre-season all the defensive midfield duties. They changed his position a bit. I know he struggled at first, but I think he's got used to it now. He had a great FA Cup gaining it against Everton. So I can't I can't see why Lalana won't 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 be playing. I think yeah. it'd be Lalana, Genie, and Chamberlain in midfield. Well, speaking about midfield, then obviously we've spoken, you know, off camera about, um, you know, who would be in that midfield spot for Henderson. Obviously, you know, Naby Keita was in there for uh, West Ham. And as everyone knows, I'm a huge Naby Keita fan. I know Mickey isn't so uh, fond of him. I've tried to convince him, guys, but it seems to be looking less and less likely that I will finally convince him. But yeah, for you then, obviously, you said who would fit in there. If you was to choose between Alex Oxley chamberlain and Naby Keita for this game, I can already kind of know your answer, but you know what would who would you pick if you was Jurgen Klopp over those two? Ox, because I think Ox <laughs> is in better form. I think he's a better player at the moment. Uh, you don't need to convince me. Uh, Kiata needs to convince me. Yeah, uh, he had a run of form last the end towards the end of last season that started to make me think, yeah, there might be a player here. I was expecting big things from him in, in from the summer and whatever. He keeps getting his niggling injuries, so I don't know whether that's holding him back, but he, he just seems to struggle in games. He seems to get, you know, I've never seen a Liverpool player give possession away so much. I, I, yeah. I really I really have seen a, a decline in his form uh, recently. So, to me, I'd keep him away from the side at the moment, but I'm not with him in training, so I don't know what they're doing. Um, you know, another player that we're, not, we're overlooking as well, He's Minamito. No one's mentioning him. Yeah. You know, he could make a surprise appearance somewhere, but I still don't think so. I think he's. I think they brought him to embed him for next season. Yeah, I, I agree with you with that. And you know, even though I think I've like, well, like you said, Naby needs to impress you instead of me battering on about him. But you know, even for me with this game, I don't think Naby will start. I think you know, a bit of a spoiler into our start and lab prediction. I think Ox is, you know, prime and ready for that game because when he came on against West Ham, you know, he just changed the game. You know, if there was one, uh, if there was an example of someone that could change a game in within 20 minutes, then Ox, you know, proved that right. But, you know, it's it's one of these things, isn't it, where, you know, I want Naby to do so well, but, you know, unless he finally shows his worth, then Klopp might move him on in the summer. And well, I'd say in the summer, I don't think he will move him on in the summer, me personally, but I know um, there's one, there's like kind of a deal that I know you uh, said yesterday. Um, well, and what was that deal that you suggested yesterday? Well, so we all know Liverpool are interested in Kai Harvitz. You know, he's one of the best young German players uh, around. I know we're going to get Timo Werner, one of the best strikers, but Harvitz is one of the best midfielders. And he's got he's got a major future in the game, a bit like Harvey Elliott. Mm-hmm. So, to me, I personally, rather than pay the big fee that, that they would want for him, let's, I would offer him Naby Keita, because I think he's a failed experiment. He knows the Bundesliga, Keita, so it would be better for Keita. He knows he can smash it in there, because we all watched him that year when we signed him, and he was amazing. Uh, perhaps the, sometimes the Premier League isn't for players. So let, I would do a swap deal with him. It's 50 million off the asking price and probably pay about 30 million. Liverpool, Liverpool are quids in that way. They get, they're getting, a, in my opinion, an upgraded player on him and probably not the same sort of player. But we've got Fabinho now who can do the, 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 that sort of thing. So, you know, and he's not a failed experiment. He is highly important and he's going to be massive for the future of Liverpool. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I personally would move him on uh, for his own sake as well as for Liverpool's sake. Yeah. Thanks, but no thanks. You know, you'll, you know, whenever you come 
visit Anfield as an opposing player, you'll get a clap and whatever. But let's let's upgrade the team. Kai Havertz for me would be a, a, an upgrade, and it's a way of keeping the price down. Well, if you guys uh, agree with that, then please let us know in the comment section down below. I think you know a few people would uh, you know would like to have their opinion on that. So please let us know in the comment section down below. But then moving on then to our starting eleven prediction, and obviously we've talked about the midfield a little bit. But Mickey, what is your team for Saturday then? Well, Allison picks himself. There's no way Adrian's going to get into. The Premier League team with if yeah. Allison's fit, then it's obviously the back four: Robbo, Trent, the full backs, the two centre backs is Gomez and VVD. It picks itself. I think ninety nine out of hundred Liverpool fans would pick the goalkeeper in the back four. It gets interesting now because I think midfield and front were looking a bit tired. Mm. I know the international break; we've not come back in the best of form. We've done enough to win the games, but to me, we we have looked a bit vulnerable, and we, and we have we've taken our seem to have taken our foot foot off the gas, if you know what I mean, a little bit. Yeah, uh, it could be the fact is they they probably some of them need taking out the limelight, or some of them need a rest. So I'm going to go as I said earlier. I'm going to go for Lalana, Genie, and Chamberlain in midfield, and I'm going to I'm going to put Big Divock down the centre. Mm. With Sal- Salah and Mane wide of him in the front three, and put Roberto Firmino on the bench because he he is struggling with form at the moment. He probably needs a, a game or two taken out. Get his get his mojo back. Once his mojo's back, he'll be flying again. We we all love Bobby. There's no way Bobby's going anywhere. Uh, there's no way Bobby's a poor player. I just think he needs. You right. know, he's played a lot of football this year. A lot of football. You know, and he is looking. You know, he hasn't scored at Anfield this year. Can you believe that? He had not scored at Anfield. He was robbed of a goal by VAR. For, you know what I mean? You know, yeah. how that how they thought that was a foul on the keeper. The keeper dropped the ball, but never mind. It, it didn't happen. But let's uh, let's roll on. Let's give Big Divock a couple of games now. Let's get him, you know, he, he's done us proud last year. Let's see what he can do for us this year. Yeah, uh, to be fair, I think that is a very good start and left. And uh, for me, then personally, I think you know it's pretty much obvious. The back five picks itself: Alison Becker. You know, like you said, Adrian's not getting anywhere near uh, Alison Becker. I think then Trent. Even though I do think Trent and maybe Robbo need a rest. Uh, like you said, you know, everyone has played a lot of football, but there isn't cover there at the minute. So, you know, both of them will start. And then, obviously, the best centre-back partnership in the league in Virgil and uh, Gomez. Uh, for me, then, I'm going to go a bit different than him in the, in the midfield. I think Fabinho will start uh, in defensive midfielder. And then I think Genie and Ox will be in the middle. I think that's pretty much a good balance, you know, between the defence and attack, in my personal opinion, anyway. Uh, I also agree with you in the sense that Bobby needs a rest, but I think Klopp might go with him. I think, you know, Klopp likes less rotation as possible, if that makes sense. But, you know, I, I do agree with you with that. But for me, I wouldn't put Dave Okarigi in there. You know, you spoke about him. Um, Takumi Minamino, could he play in the false nine? Now, Obviously, I did mention this on uh, the podcast uh, over on Jack's channel. And for me, I think, you know, Minamino could play in the false nine role. He did it against, he did a good job against Everton in the cup. And, okay, he wasn't so good against Shrewsbury, but, you know, it was experience playing there. And then I think, you know, it's pretty much obvious then who the other two are going to be. I think uh, Mo on one side, Sadio on the other. You know, if Watford have a, div- di- well, a disaster then in defence, you know, they're going to have an absolute field day, uh, you know, they, but um, going with score prediction then, uh, Mickey, what is your scoreline going to be for, uh, well, Saturday's game? A comfortable 3-1. I, I think, I think because of, of they're in a relegation battle, they're going to fight a bit more. They probably will score. I wouldn't be surprised if they scored first, to be honest. Yeah. Um, we seem to play better when teams score first against us as well. I don't know if anyone's noticed that. Um, but it, 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 it sounds like they're gonna. It sounds like one. Oh, they'll score a goal, whatever. Don't don't get down about it. It'll be a comfortable three one. Yeah, um, I think I joked yesterday saying like I'd like a nine nil, but I think that's a bit unrealistic. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go for a really comfortable two nil win. 
I think, you know, Liverpool might do those type of games where they score early and then shut out Watford and then, you know, it'll be a struggle and then, you know, Liverpool will just end the game then with a goal then towards like the 70th or 80th minute. But, you know, let us know your uh, score predictions and also let us know your starting live predictions then as well in the comment section down below. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, the end then for our match preview show for the Watford game. Uh, thank you so much, Mickey, for coming on. Uh, any last bits that you want to say? Yeah, just everyone, just keep the faith. It's not far off now. It could even be three games because the I don't know if people know. Man U play Man City next weekend. Mm. So we could go 25 points clear now because City are playing in the cup final. And then if they drop points against Man U, then it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be three games or, or two even by that time. Because I think we would have played by the time they play. Yeah. So just keep the faith. It's going to happen. Um, I'm more interested in the FA Cup game now because I'm... I'd like us to go for the FA Cup now. I think we've got a big enough lead in the Premier League not to rest so many players. I think he will rest players, but I don't think we need to go all out kids. Yeah. Um, I'd give Harvey Elliott a little uh, a little cameo, not a full game, a little cameo. I'd, yeah. play, I'd play a strong, I'd play a strong second string if that makes any sense to anybody. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree with that. But uh, guys, if you haven't, you know, if you're not following Mickey uh, on Twitter, then you know the link. Well, the link is in the video description anyway, and you know it should be the at on the video anyway um, at mfriars50. So please go and check him out on Twitter. Honestly, top red and top lad as well. So please go and check him out. And yeah, if you haven't checked us out yet, then uh, you know Instagram, Twitter at the Cop Council. Uh, if you guys want to follow us on there, if you're not already. But uh, yeah, like I said, this is the end of the video if you could then please please like share and subscribe it would be massively appreciated it to get more reds in here as well because obviously we are on the road right now to 200 subscribers and if we can get there as early as possible you know it'd be massively appreciated so thank you so much guys for tuning in into the match preview show uh, i've been connor he's been mickey and we'll all see you next time Ta-ra. <laughs>